Hi guys, I often get asked the question as to how to rotate a box, how to make something rotate so that it's actually rolling over a surface. Now there are several ways of doing this in Maya and uh, the workflow is depending on the specific scene that you're working on and the specific project that you're working on. Um, you can create physical interactions between objects that will produce a box to react like a box does in the real world. And we're going to see that when we talk about particles later in the semester. But for now, I'm going to show you the basic method to actually make something rotate, which allows you to under understand the controls that you need to change in order to make this happen. So for this, I'm going to create a simple box and I'm going to just drop it in the middle of, the, uh, of my scene. I have a, a plane, just a regular plane there to act as the floor. So nothing fantastic there. Let me go ahead and place this at the one mark. Let's make sure that it, let me focus on it really quick and see if it's right on top. It's actually a little bit too high. So let's make this 0.5 since my box is one unit so that it is right basically on top of my plane. So with that set up, let's go ahead. If I move that, you notice that it gets cut off by the plane. So that's what I want. I want to make this rotate on that plane. Now I want to make it rotate towards the X axis. So basically it's going to be rotating on the Z axis. That's the rotating axis. So with that done, let's go ahead and switch our view to the front view. And I want to rotate in the, towards the right right now. So to do so, two things need to happen. The first thing is I need to align my pivot point. Remember, the pivot point is the point of reference from which anything that we do in terms of transformations to this geometry is going to take place. So if I rotate, it's going to be based on where that pivot point is. Therefore, I need to make sure that that pivot point starts at this corner. To do so, I want to go ahead and activate the edit pivot uh, shortcut, which is the D key. So I'm pressing the D key and I'm keeping it pressed, D as in Diego. And then I'm going to press the, either the V key to snap to point, the C key to snap to curve, or the X key to snap to um, grid, depending on what I need. In this case, I need to snap to point, so I'm going to press the V as in Victor point. So both keys are pressed. The D key as in Diego and the V key as in Victor are pressed. And with that, I'm going to snap that pivot point to this corner. So now that I have the pivot point in that corner, I'm going to start creating keyframes. I'll make sure that my time marker is at one. And I am going to go ahead and before I do that, I need to have a way of activating position changes for my pivot point because I'm going to be changing the position of my pivot point as the box rotates. So to do so, I need to go ahead and turn on the channels for the pivot. You'll notice that I have channels that we've always seen throughout the semester that refer to the transformation values for the geometry. But you also have the ability to add other channels in here that refer to everything that has to do with the object. There is a lot of channels that you can activate in keyframe. So to do so, let's go to the edit drop down menu under the channels box and activate the channel control window. Now this will open up this window, which allows you to select any number of different options that you can keyframe for that particular object. Specifically, we're looking for the pivot options, which are these ones right here, rotate, translate, and rotate. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of these, shift select all of those, and I am going to move them from the non-key, keyable hidden column to the keyable, uh, keyable column. So with that done, let's go ahead and click move, and you'll notice that they got moved over here and they appear in my channels box right now. So I can go ahead and close this window now, and I have now access to controlling the position and rotation of that pivot point so that I can go ahead and move it as needed. So with that done, let me go ahead and activate my rotate tool here. And I'm going to press the J key. First, I'm going to set up a keyframe to start. Sorry, I want to start with the first keyframe. So before I do anything, I'm going to set up an original keyframe, which is where I'm going to start from. And that's this point. So I'm going to press the S key on the keyboard. Now, that creates a keyframe for everything. And some people think it's overhead. Uh, it, that's debatable. It depends on, on how you animate. Uh, for, for beginning people, it is best to create keyframes for everything, even though it's a little bit of an overhead on the rendering time. Not significant, but it, it does get on the way of cleaning up when you're in the graphing editor. So you might want to do away with that workflow as soon as possible and just focus on the keyframes, on the channels that you want to keyframe. But just for this example, I'm going to keyframe everything. Remember, the shortcut for keyframing everything is the S key. S as in Sam. If you press that, then you have keyframes for everything. All of my channels turn red. And so I have keyframes and I have a keyframe on frame one. Let me go to keyframe five. And then I'm going to rotate this box 90 degrees. So I'm going to press the J key to constrain. And I'm rotating to about 90 degrees. I see that this rotated to 90 degrees. And I want to now go ahead and move my pivot point from this corner to this corner. 
So let's press the D key on the keyboard along with the V key, long press, and then move that point to the other corner. Then I'm going to go ahead and repeat this operation all the way on 10. I'm going to go to frame 10, press the J key to constrain and rotate another 90 degrees and move my anchor point. Press the D key and press the V key and move that across to the other side. Then let's go ahead and move this all the way to frame 15, rotate it once again by constraining and move the pivot point across to the other corner and then the final rotation which would be at frame 20 then let's go ahead and press J to constrain rotate this to frame 20 and press the D and V keys to constrain the position of my pivot point and so that basically has created the rotations now if I scrub this you'll notice that my box sort of wobbles throughout the whole process and that is because my key my, my pivot point is moving across the box as it rotates and so that changes the position of the box overall because once again the pivot point is the point of reference for where my changes are happening so if my pivot point is moving then the geometry will look like it's moving along with it so with that done what I want to do is I want to constrain how that how that position change happens for the pivot point for this I need to go ahead and open up my animation graphing editor and this showcases all of the keyframes that we have created for this piece so the, I want to focus right now, I want to make sure that I have keyframes all the way for all the points up to 20 points. So let's go ahead and go through each one of these. That one has a keyframe at 20 for rotate pivot. That one stops at 15. So I need to have a keyframe at 20 for this to work. I, also, I don't have anything in rotation on the Z, so we're okay. Same thing for this one. Rotate, pivot, translate X stops at 15. I need to have, make sure that that has frames all the way to 20. Because if you remember, under my rotation for the Z-axis, I animate all the way to 20. So all the, frames, all the frames need to match for what I'm about to do. So let's go ahead and move this out of the way really quick. Place my time marker on the frame 20 and press S at that point so that I can create a keyframe for absolutely all of the different channels of information that I have there. Now, if I go back to my graph and editor, you'll notice that they all now have a keyframe on frame 20. And what we're about to do is going to work. So with that done, let's go ahead and select the entirety of the cube. And what I want to do is, I first, I'm sorry, I want to go ahead and select the rotate pivot all the way to rotate pivot translate Z. So all of this animation that is happening for the pivot point, I want to go ahead and stagger this through time. I want to make sure that it steps through time. So I want to change the tangents for this smooth tangents, EC in and out uh, setup that we have. And I want to change it from that from this option, which is the auto tangent, I want to change it to the step tangents. And when that happens, basically my animation is going to stay on, put, stay on place. My pivot point is going to stay in place from this point to this point. And at that point, it's going to switch to the other corner, which is at frame five, which is exactly when I need it to move to that corner. So therefore, my animation is going to, my pivot point is not changing position throughout these frames. And then it jumps on the last frame, which is exactly what I wanted to do. Now you'll notice that if I continue because I stepped all of the different frames, you'll notice that now my animation, let's go ahead, sorry, let me move this out of the way. Let's go ahead and keep on scrubbing. You'll see that my box basically rotates like a box would on top of a surface, right? Now I can go ahead and cycle this as we saw in class. I can go ahead and select now the entirety of the geometry here under the graphing editor can select everything and then I can go ahead and cycle post infinity cycle with offset and what that is going to do is going to continue the animation that I have created on those first four key, uh, five keyframes and it's going to continue the offset It's going to make the box keep on rotating in the direction that it was rotating on without adding any extra keyframes so when I go ahead sorry about that once again let me move this out of the way I don't like snapping boxes like that so let me go ahead and scrub and you'll notice that as soon as the frame gets to 20 it will continue on rotating all the way till I have timeline so let's go go to the uh, perspective viewport and rewind this let's go and zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole thing deselect so we don't or we don't see any of the gizmos and let's go ahead and play by pressing the alt and v keys on the keyboard alt v as in victor alt v will activate the animation and as you can see my box keeps on rotating as long as I have um, as long as I have keyframe I mean, as long as I have timeline it will keep on rotating so that is one way to animate these boxes making use of both 
the rotation values and the anchor point uh, keyframes.